Hey guys, and good morning from the Animal Sanctuary slash zoo slash farm. Animal Sanctuary in reality, zoo in Kyle's magical world in his head, and farm in legal terms. Good morning, you can hear my foxes crying already, so... That's a little surprise that I will be showing you in a second. I posted a YouTube video last week and I showed you guys everything. I showed you the land, I showed you the mushroom, I showed you the porter cabin, which we never ever ended up with. I told you all about the farmer drama. This is my next YouTube video and today I am at the farm slash animal sanctuary slash zoo on my own. Um, so I'm just gonna say good morning to all of my animals. I'm gonna feed them all and I'm gonna talk about the backstories of my animals too. Um, but first of all, let me give you a little a little look at what, what everything's looking like. Before I start walking around the pits of mud that this place holds, um, I should probably change from my trainers into my wellies. Yesterday, I got stuck in the mud and had to walk through the whole field barefoot in mud up to here. So let's, let's get some wellies on. Let me see if I can do a transition, wait. Okay, so I'm gonna start from the very beginning of the land and just give you a little peek of everything. As you guys know, we got the lane made um, and that's just so we can get things in and out. Equipment, animals, farm supplies, etc., etc. First up, uh, I tried to build this little shed. It didn't really go to plan. As you can see, we've got some malfunctions and bad designing, but this is literally just wood sitting on gravel. Um, and this was gonna be to store the equipment, but We've had a lot going on, so there has been no finishing of that. Now I am going to walk over to Enclosure Uno Momento. I'm learning Spanish. I'm not really. I did learn Spanish though. Anyway, we're going to walk over to the first enclosure and I'm going to show you guys. This enclosure, again, is just a temporary one. We didn't want to cut any wood as we know that we will be taking these down. I'm going to give you guys a sneak peek inside. It absolutely wouldn't be fair on the animals if I went into the enclosure empty handed. So we're going to make them some breakfast. We've got some carbohydrates, some beef, which is cooked and some carrots. So to the carbohydrates, beef and carrots, we added some more meat, we added some broccoli, apples and fresh carrots and we do feed this animal raw once a day but the reason why I'm not doing that right now is because my moped has broke down and we don't have a fridge here so I wasn't able to bring the raw meat today. And before I serve this meal I want you to pause the video and comment which animal you think this meal is for. And who is excited for their breakfast? So if anyone guessed correctly, this meal was for the fox is. Um, I actually have a new friend of yours to meet. So you guys know Pongo already. He is a rescue platinum fox and platinum foxes are descendants of red foxes, which were bred years ago for fur farming. And then they were all rescued and became domestic. I use the word domestic very lightly as no foxes are domesticated. Pongo is a rescue from a local wildlife park. They had his mum and dad who then bred and the mum unfortunately ate three out of four of her cubs and Pongo was the only survivor. So when he came to us, he was still on milk, I think half milk and we weaned him off of milk and he's now onto his big boy meals. Yes, you are Pongo. And he had a nice meaty chicken bone yesterday and he absolutely loved it. And then over here we have our new fox, Pongo's new friend who is called Rosa. She is a silver fox, which is very closely related to Pongo. Um, so she's also a descendant of red foxes, which were also bred for fur farming. Um, and as you can see, the silver is coming through her coat right now. She'll probably end up losing the majority of that black fur. You can actually see her little cub fur going away. Um, and her coat is looking so much better since she's been here, but she's chomped down all of her meat as foxes are so competitive over food. So she is like, I need to eat this meat before Pongo comes and steals it. Sadly, yesterday I fed the foxes um, chicken legs, like I told you, and Pongo is great with raw food because he's so used to eating it. So he chomped it right down, bit right through the bone, ate his, and Rosa was still finishing hers. She was really struggling with the bone and the different parts. I won't go into detail, it's a bit gory and Pongo came and stole it off of her. So I had to give her another one in which she ate all of the flesh, left the bone and Pongo came and stole it off of her. But 
I think it's safe to say he's gonna teach her some foxy lessons. But in fox world, they have the alpha female, similar to meerkats, um, the female is the boss. So when she grows up and becomes a little bit more hormonal and territorial, she will definitely take over. And while I'm here in the shade, um, able to sit down and have a chat, I just thought it'd be great to clarify and answer the question of, Kyle, where are all your other animals? Um, guys, all of my other animals are still at home. We're working on their enclosures. We're working on the planning side of things. Guys, please. Uh, we're working on the planning side of things. So all of my animals are at home. I wake up super early at the moment, around six o'clock. I feed all of my animals, feed my cats, my dogs, everything like that. <laughs> Play with the dogs, have a coffee. I haven't been eating too well, to be honest. Um, I've just been so wrapped up with this whole thing. I feel like I'm very brunchy at the moment. Anyway, I feed all of my animals and then I come up here and feed these animals at about nine o'clock. And I know that some people may be um, concerned that I'm not living on site and that this isn't actually at my house. The great thing is we've had some amazing CCTV people in and we've had CCTV put in all of the hedges around the enclosures. So if anything happens, we're able to just watch it on our phone and get a notification. We live a few minutes away and all of the animals are safe. Okie dokie, now let's prepare the food for our next animal now this animal likes to eat mostly grass so we don't give a lot of fruit and veg it's just a small amount of the diet and then we give a load of hay as well so we're gonna go in with some apple and i don't feed the cores of apples to any of my animals um they're definitely okay for some and i've done lots of research on it but i just don't like the whole cyanide thing um I mean, there's something wrong with me and I used to eat a lot of apple cores when I was a kid. So that could be the explanation. <laughs> These trunks don't need to be this small, but then I get worried about choking and everything like that. So I like to do everything diddy. Uh, and then I'm just going to use the rest of the carrot that I gave to the foxes as well. Um, the foxes get fed sort of their main meal in the morning. Then they get snacks throughout the day. Like yesterday, they got the chicken leg and they also got chicken wings in the morning. Well, morning slash afternoon. Um, and then they get a main meal at night or some days they get three meals it just depends how they're responding to food but i love to scatter food in there so i put like biscuits and mealworms and little things like that just so they can go and rummage through the gravel um, and if you're wondering why there is gravel and thinking oh that must be a little bit sore on their feet um we basically have chicken wire and then we have a membrane and then we have gravel and then we have bark and there is still so much bark to go into the enclosure it's just one night i was up here and I really wanted to house the foxes. Um, and <laughs> and I was like grabbing the bark. Bark is not easy to move. It's, it's not like gravel where you can, gravel's hard. Like you've got to go and then into the wheelbarrow. But with the bark, I had to like scoop it with my hands. I was covered in bark. It was about three in the morning and I was like, all right, got to call it a day. So um, we will be <laughs> putting the rest of the bark in very soon. I'm going to add some parsley, add some hay, and then let's go and meet the next animal. Oh, and just to clarify, I am doing water in between all of this. I'm just not filming the whole water process because it's a little bit boring. Like I said, this is only the first meal that I like to give the animals. I just take their food out from yesterday and then give them um, a little assortment. And then I scatter fruits and veg throughout the day. Um, but they eat a lot of grass, so sometimes they don't even touch it until I scatter it and they find it as they're rummaging through the grass. I would like you all to meet the one and only, the beautiful Jessie LaRue. Oh. Jessie LaRue is an albino Bennett's brown wallaby who was born here in the UK. Um, she came from a private collection, so somebody basically had a male and a female albino Bennett's brown wallaby. They bred and they ended up with two beautiful albino joeys. Um, and this is Jessie. She is a year old, as we've been told. Um, and as you can see, she's looking around for some grass. But as with um, many albino creatures, she has visual impairment. So it's quite hard for her to see around and detect things. So her ears, which can turn 180 degrees on their own, all wallabies can do this, but especially albinos have much more heightened senses. Anyway, um, she runs around, she looks for grass, she eats grass. And we went to see these two wallabies and they were almost an accidental birth if that makes sense um the breeder had the two they had two joeys and he wasn't very prepared for two joeys so we now have jesse larue and we have this little guy right here who is timmy larue um both of them are only recently getting used to human attention but jesse has been here a little bit longer and she has been settling in super super well timmy over there has much better vision than her so he is kind of her eyes so when he goes to find the food 
she follows. And I have some really beautiful clips of him nibbling on her ear and then sort of working each other out. But yeah, and just to let you guys know, this enclosure, um, as much as it's a great size, uh, it's definitely not the enclosure that will be their forever home. I wanna make a huge wallaby walkthrough with sort of tall fencing around where they can just graze on grass and jump on things and everything like that. One crazy thing is you obviously know that these, um, the wallabies come from sort of New Zealand, Australia, Tasmania, but um, it's actually mental. We now have wild wallabies in the UK. I think we have them in the Isle of Man, Scotland, and possibly somewhere in England as well, which is just insane. Um, that's due to private collections. I remember, I can't remember what the story is, but I'll have to tell you guys at another time. But there was a woman who owned a lot of land. I think she owned an island years ago. And she said she was obsessed with Australia. And she said, I want wallabies here. And there are now wild wallabies on this island. And she is long gone, but uh, the wallabies are thriving. The enclosures are nowhere near finished yet. I know I've shown you them, um, but even though they are just temporary and hopefully not here for very long whatsoever, um, we've still got to sort of perfect them, add some netting over the top, add enrichment for the foxes, which is super important. But yeah, I'm so glad that I got to show you guys my new animals and there will be so much more of them on here very soon. Um, I do have some other animals to show you too. We've got some rescues that we're looking at um farm animals which i cannot wait to show you uh, but yeah thank you so much for watching um your support so far has meant the absolute world and this journey is going to be a lot more harder than i actually initially thought i mean i knew that there would be challenges but i didn't realize those challenges would be boulders that you've got to climb through and jump over but with the support of you guys and with the support of the lovely people around me we're going to get through this. So thank you so much for watching. I cannot wait to show you more. And yeah, I'm super excited for what's about to come. Bye.